always sad She worked so hard and was treated so bad It seemed to her everyone was mean So she cried and cried till her face was clean Yes, this is a story of little Cinderella whose real name was Myrtle Spritzelfinger But she changed it to Cinderella Spritzelfinger because Myrtle is such a hard name to remember Cinderella came from a broken home. Her father got mad at her mother, so he took an ax and broke up their home. Then Cindy's mother grabbed the ax and took a swing at her father. This gave him a splitting headache and a permanent part in his hair, which was just as well as his head could stand a few good parts. <laughs> Mr. Spritzelfinger divorced Cinderella's mother and married a nasty old woman just for spite. And that's all she ever gave him. The old lady had three miserable-looking daughters named Anna... Lana and Banana. She was the worst of the bunch. She had so many wrinkles in her forehead, she had to screw her hat on. But she had a voice like a bird. Bark, bark, bark. A buzzard. Lana was skinny and ugly. But as the years passed, she changed. She became fat and ugly. She had a shape like the coastline of New Jersey, but she was a little plump around Hoboken. She had so many double chins, she needed a bookmark to find her pearls. Anna had long black hair growing down her back. On her head, nothing. Her hair was so long she could sit on it, which came in mighty handy when they ran out of chairs. Her shiny black tresses came to just an inch above her knees, and her knees came to just an inch above her ankles. Her arms were so long, when she flexed her muscles, her elbow made a fist. These three dames were a mess. But they had a nice job in a beauty parlor. They sat in a window with a sign under them that said, Don't let this happen to you. <coughs> Cinderella's three stepsisters were very mean to her. They made her sleep in the fireplace, and this made her feel like a silly ash. <coughs> One day they said to her, Blech, which was their pet name for Cinderella, We are going to a ball given by the prince, and you must stay home and wash the dishes, mop the floors, scrub the windows, beat the rugs, polish the stove, iron the laundry, dust the tables, lift that bale, tote that barge, and after lunch... <laughs> Cinderella was very unhappy because she wanted to go to the ball and meet the prince. She knew he was handsome because she had seen his picture in the centerfold of Playboy magazine. He was Mr. June. She cried as she was sweeping the floors. As she swept, she wept. And as she wept, she swept. Suddenly she stopped. She heard a tingling at the door. She thought it was Sam Tingling, her Chinese laundry man. So she called out, Come in! And in walked a fairy. Cinderella said, You must be my fairy godmother. And the fairy godmother said, Yeah. And Cinderella said, And what is that you have in your hand? Your magic wand? And the FG replied, No, it's a hockey puck, stupid. Of course it's my magic wand. And wait till you see what happens when I touch you with it. Whee! All your dirty, grimy clothes will disappear, and you will be sparkling white. And kid, if this thing works out, I'm going to get a job doing TV commercials. <coughs> Cinderella looked at her aghast with eyes akimbo. But the moment the magic wand touched her, she was beautiful. Her dress was pure gold. She had a diamond tiara in her hair and a glass slipper for each foot. Cinderella was the first person to ever wear a pair of glasses on her feet. This way, her legs could always see where her toes were going. Cinderella said, In this get-up, I can't go to the palace in a bus. And the good fairy said, You will go in a big coach pulled by six white mice. And Cinderella said, How can six little mice pull me in a big coach? And her fairy godmother said, Don't worry, we'll give you a whip. And then her fairy godmother said, Be sure and return at the stroke of midnight. We gotta get that coach back to the Mouse You Drive Company or they'll charge us for an extra day. So Cinderella went to the dance and had a ball. Or she went to the ball and had a dance. Hmm. However, she saw the prince and she got so excited she called out, Here, prince, here, prince. And when he saw her, something went boing. It was the mainspring in his Mickey Mouse wristwatch. The prince was enchanted. He said to Cinderella, May I have this next dance? And Cinderella said, Sure, I don't want it. 
So they waltzed the hours away. Suddenly she heard the old clock striking. Cinderella said, oh my gosh, 12 o'clock. She couldn't count either. I gotta get out of here, she said. She started to run and the prince was right behind her. No matter how fast she ran, he was closely behind her. She stopped, she said, why are you following me so closely? And the prince replied, sorry lady, but my sword is stuck in your bustle. Cinderella broke away and scampered home, whatever that means. In her haste, she dropped one of her glass slippers. The prince picked it up. Her big toe was still in it. The prince said, I will find her and marry the girl whose foot fits this fine, sleek, slipper size 13 AAA. So he searched throughout the kingdom, but alas, all the feet were too small. Then he came to Cinderella's house. The three ugly stepsisters tried on the slipper, but their feet were much too tiny. Then Cinderella tried on the slipper, and the slipper was much too tiny. So she rubbed her feet with chicken fat and slipped into the slippery slipper. Well, the prince married Cinderella, and they moved to Hollywood where they lived happily for three or four hours. The prince said he divorced Cinderella because there wasn't enough room in the castle for the four of them. Him, Cinderella, and her two big feet. But don't be sorry for Cinderella, kiddies. She now has a nice job working for the government, stamping out forest fires. And the moral of the story is, show me a spider that weaves a tangled web and I'll show you a cockeyed insect. (laughs) 